We do the second lesson in EPS, the interrelationships between living things. We'll do it in two parts. Today we will be doing part one. A riddle to solve. An age-old tree with a thick, strong trunk gives deep, dark shade from the scorching sun. Like an old man's beard with many strands, it has ropes worth swinging from every branch. I'm sure you've guessed it, children. You're right, it is the banyan tree. Let's solve another one. I love to be planted in direct sunlight. I produce golden yellow blooms with a dark center. I can be big or small. What am I? Yes, it's the sunflower. Let's try and name these plants. They are useful to us in many ways. The picture on your screen is Methi or Fenugreek, Ajwai or Caraway, a good plant for treating cold, palak or spinach, tulsi or holy basil, again medicinal, palas or flame of the forest, and aloe vera again has medicinal value. Now what is interrelationship? The way two or more things is related to other or others is called an interrelationship. Now, we are going to see the interrelationship between the butterfly and the flower. The butterfly takes nectar from the flower and, and helps the flower by pollinating and thus helping the plants to grow better. Let's see another example of interrelationship. The parrots eat corn from the plants. They get food and they help the plant. How? They disperse the seeds of corn through their droppings, then helping the plants to grow. Now we have another case of a relationship. Some relationships are destructive. Termites live on trees and make them hollow and destroy them. You can see the picture how the termites have eaten. In Hindi, we call it as dhima. They have eaten away the trees and made it weak. And maybe soon it will fall off. Now, children, we all depend on our environment for our daily needs, right? We have many needs like food, water, air, shelter and clothing. And all these needs are met in the environment. For example, we get food from plants and animals. Food, you can see the fruits on the tree. Animals provide us meat as well as eggs. We get water from rivers and lakes. We get air from the atmosphere around us. Shelter. We make a shelter using plants and other resources from the environment. And clothing. Plant fiber and animal skin are used for clothing. But are the needs of all living things the same? Let us see. A flower relies on a butterfly for pollination. The butterfly gets its food from the nectar of the flower. A frog feeds on insects, a goat feeds on grass, whereas a tiger feeds on other animals. Fish live in water and they breathe with the help of gills. A pigeon can fly in the air and lives on trees and higher places. Bulrushes grow in water, but a lemon tree can grow only on land. It cannot grow in water. Another thing we need to know, children, is insects breathe with the help of air holes. A butterfly breathes with the help of air holes. Fish use gills, whereas the other animals use lungs. Now, thus we see the differences in the needs of each living thing. So, all living things' needs are different. Any type of living thing will be found where all its needs are fulfilled. On your screen, you can see the tiger. It has stripes on its body. The stripes help the tiger to hide from its prey in tall grass. So, the prey is not able to spot it. And choosing the right time, it hunts its prey. You can see the picture, tiger chasing the deer. A tiger always stays near a water hole and a cave where it can keep its young ones safe. 
Here we have learned two new words. One is predator, an animal that kills and eats other animals. Here the tiger is the predator, prey, an animal that is killed by another animal. The tiger, here the deer is the prey. Any type of living thing will be found where all its needs are fulfilled, that it needs food, shelter, as well as water and enough air, of course. A place where a living thing lives is called its habitat, right? So you can see the frog lives in places where its food is easily available and it cannot be seen by its enemies easily. The picture on your right is called a leaf-tailed gecko. It looks just like the leaf on the tree in which it is. Now, why do they look like this? This is called as camouflage, right? So the stripes of the tiger, the green color of the frog, the leaf-shaped tail of the gecko are all examples of camouflage. That is, they are so beautifully hidden in the habitat that they are not spotted easily by their prey as well as their predators. So if they want to hunt for food, then the prey cannot see it. And if they have to be hunted also, it is difficult to spot them. Now, we all know animals are our friends, right? Now, you can see the picture of the cow, the buffalo and the goat. Animals like the cows, buffaloes and goats, they give us milk. Whereas, a bullock is used to plough fields and draw carts. Many animals are used for hard labour like the donkeys, the camels, the horses, etc. Animals are also our friends. We eat the meat of some animals like the goat. Aquatic animals like the fish are also used as foodstuffs. Hens and ducks give us eggs and we also eat their meat. Uses of cattle dung. The dung of cattle is made into dung cakes and they are used as fuel. When they burn, they give out smoke. Here you can see the lady making dung cakes, which is used for cooking and it generates a lot of smoke. A combustible gas called gober gas is obtained from cattle dung. That too is used as fuel. It burns without smoke. You have the biogas generator plant or the gober gas plant on your screen, which supplies gas, the man is cooking and you see there is no smoke. It's very comfortable. We learn a new term, combustible, able to burn easily. How do we get biogas? Biogas is a gas which is produced by the fermentation of organic matter like manure, sewage that is cattle dung, municipal waste, leaves of plants, vegetable peels, etc. This waste is mixed with water which is called as slurry and it is poured into a pit. From here it passes through a pipe into the biogas generator. The gas gets generated and it is supplied through pipes to households where it is used for cooking and also for lighting biogas lamps. The waste that we get after the generation of the gas is excellent fertilizer for crops. Thus, biogas is an excellent renewable source of energy. Cattle dung is used for plastering mud houses. Now you can see here, I'm sure in your villages you do that. All our mud houses are plastered with cattle dung. Manures made from sheep pellets and cattle dung are good for crops. You can see sheep pellets on your left. That is the dung of the sheep, which are all like small, small black tablets and on the right you can see the cattle dung or what we call as gober. They are very good for crops. We Now we all use animals for our purposes, right? We make use of the animals to help us. So naturally it is our duty to look after them well. We must also take care to see that they are not killed wantonly. First, keep the shelters of the animals clean and airy. Give the animals enough food and clean water after proper intervals. Protect 
the animals from the cold and the wind. Vaccinate the animals against common diseases at the right time. Promptly take them to a vet to take care of their injuries and ailments. Ailments means sickness. Do not kill animals wantonly. We are going to learn two new terms here. Wet, a doctor for animals. What is wantonly, unnecessarily, without any reason? So you should not kill animals unnecessarily. You need to protect them. Now here you can see a yak. A yak wool is used to make blankets and other wooden garments. You recognize this animal? Sheep wool is used to make blankets and woolen garments. Silk is got from silkworm. The skin of dead animals is tanned to make leather. So you see we also get clothes from animals. We learn a new word, tanning. Treating skins and hides of animal to produce leather is called as tanning. Next, we learn about something new. We call as what we call as a lark. I'm sure your parents have got lark jewelry at home. The lark from the lark insect is used as seals and also to make jewelry and decorative articles. Let's see. The brown thing on top, you can see the little insect. It's called the lark insect. It produces a red substance. This red substance, which you can see, which is made into sticks on top right corner, is used to make Gornman seals. Can you see down? Those letters are sealed. And some bangles are there, which are made from lark. I'm sure your parents have it at home, your mothers. We get honey from the honeybee. Honey, again, has medicinal qualities. Some animals help farmers in a different way. On your screen, you can see the rice crops. You can see the grasshopper and you can see the frog. You know, children, insects are great enemies of crops. They eat away the crops and destroy them. Recently, you must have seen the locust attack on various crops and trees. They've eaten away and destroyed a lot of crop. So this is what happens if there are a lot of insects in our fields. So the frogs are great help to the farmers. They eat away these insects and protect the crops. Another great enemy of the crops is a rat. The rat drinks into the fields and ruins the crops. So the snakes, what do they do present in the field? They eat the rats and protect the crops. So children, if you see a snake in the field, we should not kill it. At the most, what you can do is you can just shoo it away. Snakes eat rats that live in fields. Frogs eat insects. Thus, they prevent destruction of crops in the fields. Another important friend of the farmer is our earthworm. Earthworms burrow in the soil and make it porous and loose. Porous means it becomes airy. Loose soil is good for the crop. We learn a new word, burrow. Burrow means to dig a hole in the ground. Now, for some interesting craft activity. On your screen, you can see two living things. One is a chameleon and the other is a fish. Now, it's a small, lovely, interesting craft. When I press this, I feel as if the chameleon is eating an insect. Did you notice this? Yes. Similarly, when I press the fish, it feels like the big fish is eating away the small fish. Now, how did you make this? This is very simple. You need to draw this animal on a paper, you need to cut it into two halves. You'll stick the first half on one side of a clip and the second one on the second side of the clip. So you cut and stick it in such a way that it feels like one. So when you open it, you the animal moves like this. I've done the same here. I've drawn the fish. First, I colored it and everything. Then I cut it into two halves. I stuck one on the top part, one on the lower part. If you look behind. Did you notice it? Yes. I'm sure you would love to do this, children. You can do it with many other creatures. 
after watching the video very carefully try and solve this exercise i'm sure you'll be able to get the answers thank you children stay safe